Okay guys, so we're back with another episode on this 1991 CDU XP. Now if you haven't watched the first episode, watch it here. Because I found and purchased this in 24 hours. Yes, 24 hours. So it's an epic video. Go give it a watch. In this series, the focus is going to be about restoring this ski to completely OEM. Now, the ski is in great condition, don't get me wrong, but the previous owners have focused more on the mechanical maintenance of this ski than the actual cosmetics. So the cosmetics are the area that I'm going to be focusing most of my attention on. And there are some things that are bugging me. I'm going to go across the ski, scrutinize it, and get everything restored and back to its pure beauty. Okay, so the to-do list is quite hefty. In particular, these footwells, they're looking a little bit tired and letting the team down. So there's a little bit of mold and mildew, so that's gonna need something specific to tackle it. But I'll do the research. I don't want any discoloration because that can happen if you use bleach-based products. So I need to be very, very careful with the products I use. I know a lot of you guys online will say, just take them off, put some you know aftermarket ones on there. But this series is all about OEM, remember? So we're not doing any of that. These guys are staying original. There is some bumping in them, which you sometimes get, you know, when you get water underneath them, if you don't push all the water out. So I may have to somehow get some sort of adhesive underneath and actually tack it down to stop this, you know, wavy effect. We want to hit the waves in the water. We don't want our footwells looking like that, do we? We've also got the cleaning of this ski. Now I can't wait to deep clean this ski, get some detergents on it, water, you know, give it a good rinse. Now the ski looks okay, but you know, you, you, you do have grime in places. You rub your hands under the handrails or the rear pump. There's just that sort of grease and build up the years of use. So yeah, we're gonna tackle that. And of course, my favorite bit, we're gonna polish and wax the skis because um, there are swirls in the gel coat, which are not awful, but with that said, we do obviously wanna try and get it looking as best as it can. I'm not quite sure, if, but on this ski, if you look really, really closely, it's almost sort of like an off-white. I'm not sure if that's intentional for the year or if it's some sort of like UV degradation. Once I've given it a good polish, I'll then reapply the decals. I wanna wax all the way over the top. So when I'm waxing, I'll wax essentially over the gel coat and also up over the decals to really give it as much protection as I can. Now I find that wax is just really, really great for just longevity on things that are gonna be in the water, especially sea. You know, salt is really, really abrasive. So any way of being able to protect this is great. I also have some elastic um, waxes, which are suitable and, you know, UV stable. And then we've got things like the vinyl on the handlebars. So I generally just wanna protect the ski as much as I'm cleaning it, because that's the other really important part of this process that restoring the ski is part of it, but it's the longevity and keeping the ski going for like another five, 10 years. Next up is the front cowling. Now this XP logo is actually original, which is great, but the previous owner has tried to save it at some point when it's obviously peeled and used super glue, which won't suffice. So that needs to come off, create new artwork, and I'll put a new, fresh new decal on. I'm gonna be removing these nasty fishy decals on the back. Now I don't know who put them on there, but they're definitely aftermarket. They should not be there, so they're coming off. There's a couple of other ancillary decals. There's one CD one on the hole, which has actually got a chip in it, which needs to be replaced. So I'm gonna take it all off and put a brand new one on there. And there's a safety sticker on the rear pump, which has got a little chip out of it, which I know I can source from one of the original owner manuals. So we get that replaced as well. And then there's these little pesky holes. Obviously due to the age where the seat's been put on and off, you've got little holes in pretty much four of the corners. So instead of taking the vinyl off, which I know pretty much all of you guys will just say, replace the whole vinyl of the seat. I want to keep it original again. So I'm going to find an upholster, get these little baby holes all sewn up. Well, I don't think it'd be sewn. I think they'll get patched. I'm not hundred percent sure. So I need to look into this. Hopefully it doesn't cost an arm and a leg. Um, and I'm not forced kicking and screaming to have to change this vinyl. Then there's this trailer. So this trailer is actually a good chassis, but it's letting the team down with this terrible paint job. So I'm gonna get it acid dipped and powder coated. I gotta get up. And I'm gonna get these color coded, either a neon green or a purple. Put in the comments what you think will look better, but it's gonna be the same principle as what I did with my DI. It looks really, really cool. It takes some time fanning through a color wheel book, but we should be able to get something that looks really, really cool. I may replace these, I'm not sure. I'm not too keen on the profile of these ones. I quite like the curvaceous ones, but we'll see. Obviously you'll get the alloy wheels dipped as well because they've just been painted with like an Amorite paint. Get those acid dipped and have those also powder coated along with the trailer. Hoping to go like a black gloss similar to the DI again, but again, let me know what you think. I don't want to go something too garish, but suggestions are welcome. 
Last but not least, I need to source the parts that are missing or not OEM. So the first one is the cover. Now the cover is particularly irritating me because it's an aftermarket cover. Now to some people this doesn't matter. To me, I want to have the correct year for this ski. And trust me, when you see this cover on this ski, it will blow you away, but I've got to find it first, right? Also, we have this lanyard, which is not original. So I'm going to try and track down what should have been on there for this year. It's pre-desk. This is not electronically coded. So that'll be interesting. We'll try and find one of those. So I've got a lot to get through. I've got my work cut out, but I'm going to cut these videos up into smaller sort of bite-sized videos so you guys can follow along. Hopefully there's some content in there that really helps you guys out with your sea dude. In particular, this is a 91X piece. And this is right at the beginning of the journey of sea dudes, sort of evolution, if you like. So hopefully this is really helpful. So hit the subscribe button, guys, because there's going to be lots more exciting videos on this 91, but also I've got the DI, the 2003 XP. So there's going to be lots of cool videos. You know, the only place on YouTube really where you're going to find skis this old with content, this detail. I absolutely love these skis. Hopefully you guys watching can kind of embrace the mentality, you know, not close the doors on these beauties. I mean, once upon a time, these guys were the cutting edge, you know, 1991, this would have been like the flagship, you know? So try to remember that when everyone, you know, is kind of going spark, 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 see you spark. So stay tuned guys, hit the like button. And honestly, thank you for watching. Yes, a toothbrush. Woo